Brothers and sisters, today is the second Sunday of Advent. St. Mark begins his account by stating, The good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Of the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark is the only one who begins his account of the Gospel by telling us what he is writing is the Gospel or good news. One of the word gospel, one of the meaning of the word gospel is good news. In his historical context, at the time that Mark was writing the word gospel or good news was used in a different sense. It was used to announce the bet of the emperor, and it was also used to announce the news of victory by the emperor. Such news brought hope, peace, well-being and happiness. When Mark decided to use the same word gospel or good news for what he was writing, he did that to draw the attention of Christians to the fact that the real well-being, the real peace, the real happiness come not from the emperor's bread or victories, rather the real good news is the good news of salvation. The good news is a person, Jesus of Nazareth. In the Gospel, Mark provides two titles for Jesus, the Christ and the Son of God. The first title, Christ, or Christo in Greek, or Messiah in Hebrew, means the anointed one. In Israel, the king and priest were anointed with oil. Mark identified Jesus with the promised Messiah of the Jews who fulfilled all the messianic predictions. The second title, the Son of God, referred to the relationship between Jesus and God the Father. The relationship especially evident in Jesus' baptism, transfiguration, and his trial before the centurion. In today's Gospel, St. Mark talked about the ministry of John the, Bapti John the Baptist, which was prophesied in the Old Testament in today's first reading. Mark stated that the ministry of John the Baptist was to prepare the way of the law, and he did prepare the way for Jesus. St. Mark is very clear in his understanding that Jesus is the law, that he is God incarnate. God states through the prophet Isaiah, make his path straight. We have the images of the building up of a great road for the arrival of a royal king, to fill in the hole and to knock down the hills that are in the way. The impression of preparing the physical way of the law is just a visual image because the real preparation must take place in our heart. John appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Baptism was already practiced in the Jewish community in the form of a ceremonial immersion. John's baptism was related to the Jewish practice, ceremonial washing practice by the Jews of that day, especially by the priests, and their need to purify themselves before serving the temple. They're coming close to the things of God. John was preparing the people to purify themselves spiritually, to repent their sins, so that they too can come close to God and allow God into their hearts. We read of John the Baptist and people of the whole Judean countryside and all the people from Jerusalem were going out to him. John's ministry met with a wonderful response. Many people recognized their sinfulness 
and they need to get ready for the Messiah. The baptism administered by John was not the Christian baptism which the church administered. Christian baptism is much more. Through it, we are buried with Christ in his death and raised with him to a new life. Christian baptism cleanses us of both original sin and actual sin commit up to that point. It calls us to be born again into the family of God. It incorporates us into Christ as member of his mystical body, initiate us into life in Christ and his church. It restores to us the supernatural life of God and infuse in us the grace and gift of the Holy Spirit. All this comes through the action of the Holy Spirit, divine activity that was absent in John's baptism. John the Baptist himself declared, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, today is the second Sunday of Advent. There are four Sundays of Advent. We have two more Sundays, and then we will meet Christmas. The season of Advent is one season that is easily misunderstood and easily misused. In our office, our school, our home, our shopping mall, we already see Christmas light, Christmas sales, Christmas carol, Christmas decoration, and we are also organizing Christmas party. Everyone is hardly spoken of outside of the church, but let us not to get them confused. Everyone is not the same as Christmas. The church called us to repent during Advent, to prepare the way of the law, reminding us the importance of going to confection, preparing, our, preparing ourselves for the sacrament of confection is as important as actually confessing our sins to the priest. Without proper, without proper preparation, we can miss those sins and imperfection that we should bring to our law, or we may rush through the sacrament. Making a good confession will help us to realize how many sins we have committed and how much we need a savior. A common fear we have during Advent that Christmas will come like it always does, but we will be no better for it. During this time of the year, we may be dealing with a lot of things, family gathering, Christmas shopping, set up the Christmas tree or the manger scene, things we need to get done and more. Where does Jesus fit in among those worries? Deep down in our heart, we carefully know that we have a chance for transformation during Advent, but we often forget to ask for it in prayer. In a short while, we will receive the Eucharist, the same person that John the Baptist proclaimed that he is more powerful, and so even John is not worthy to sit down and untie the thong of his sandal. Let us ask Jesus to help us prepare our heart for his coming and to aid us to have a good and holy advent. <laughs>